We're now going to look at the reactions of alcohols. The first reaction we're going to look at is the acid-base reaction. Alcohols are reasonable sort of medium strength basid. Alcohols are alcohols are medium strength acids in the or in the range of organic acids. When we deprotonate them, the conjugate base is called an alk oxide. We have two common ways of doing this, both involve replacing or, or deprotonating and using a sodium counter ion. The first one is to just mix the acid directly with sodium metal. This is particularly effective with um, uh, alcohols that have small carbon groups like sodium, I'm sorry, like methyl and ethyl. We mix it with sodium metal. The metal starts to transfer electrons in the bond breaks, we make hydrogen gas, and we make the carbon oxygen negative ion, which is called alkoxide ion, paired up with a sodium plus counter ion. For larger alcohols, or for a little bit more controlled reaction, we use this reagent. This reagent is called sodium hydride, Again, it's actually probably a covalent compound, but it does come uh, in, in sort of a ionic solid lattice. This reagent essentially provides us with a sodium positive ion and a hydrogen negative ion. And the hydrogen negative ion acts generally like a base. It's not a very good nucleophile. That negative hydrogen base makes a bond to hydrogen plus, and again, makes a molecule of hydrogen gas, and we're left with alkoxide and sodium positive ion. The next reaction we're going to look at is the oxidation reaction of primary alcohols to aldehydes. Our observed reaction looks like this. We start with a primary alcohol. A primary alcohol is going to have only one carbon group attached to the alcohol carbon, the carbon directly bonded to the hydroxyl group. We're going to treat that with a reagent that is abbreviated PCC. I'm going to explain down below what that abbreviation stands for, but quite frankly, most organic chemists just use PCC when speaking about this reagent and in fact you can just write that over the arrow and most organic chemists are going to understand exactly what you mean. This reagent results in removal of one hydrogen, formation of a double bond, and deprotonation which gives us as a result an aldehyde. Our former alcohol carbon now has a double bond to the oxygen, and one of the hydrogens has been removed. Now, just a little bit of details about this reaction. This reaction is generally run in dichloromethane solvent. We need to use a solvent that has some degree of polarity, but that doesn't have alcohols or other things that might react with PCC. So hydrocarbon like dichloromethane is a really good choice. Therefore, you're often going to see people write PCC CH2Cl2 in the reagents by the arrow. That is not required, but I'm warning you just so you don't get confused when you might see it. The the CH2Cl2 is not actually a reactant, it is just the solvent. PCC itself is an acronym for this word, pyridinium chlorochromate. And I've underlined the particular letters that are um, relevant to that acronym. Pyridinium chlorochromate is actually formed in this way. You put chromium trioxide, which is a solid, you mix it with hydrogen chloride, 
and pyridine. These form a reaction where you get sort of a complex between the pyridine, the chloride ion, the hydrogen, and it becomes, and it precipitates out as an orange solid. We can then weigh and use that orange solid just in the open atmosphere. We can spoon it into a mixture of our reactant and dichloromethane, and we observe reaction. And in fact, one very interesting thing about this is that this bright orange solid, when it does the reaction, turns into a dark greenish brown substance. And so we can see if it's working or not. This is, at this point, I'd like to point out that there are many oxidation agents that are used in organic chemistry. Most of them, however, contain either chromium, high oxidation state like chromium-6, oxidation state manganese like manganese-7, or high oxidation state cerium like cerium-3. We're going to see some of these in our later discussions. We're now going to look at the oxidation of secondary alcohols to ketones. Our observed reaction looks like this. A secondary alcohol is going to have two carbon groups attached to the alcohol carbon. Those two carbon groups do not have to be the same. So I've indicated one as R and the other as R prime. A secondary alcohol is also going to have a hydrogen directly attached to that alcohol. And that is important because we need to have a hydrogen because in order to do this reaction, we're going to be removing a hydrogen from this central carbon. For this oxidation, we are not going to use PCC. In theory, PCC works, but it turns out it's not as reactive as the reagent we're going to use. And therefore, it's very slow. So a reaction that might take only a few minutes on a primary alcohol, if we use PCC on a secondary alcohol, it might take several days. That's just not considered practical in most cases. So we use an, uh, a reagent that it has been given the name Jones reagent. Presumably the person who discovered this reagent was a scientist whose last name was Jones. Again, there are specific uh, things that are used for Jones reagent that we're going to talk about down here, but you are free to just write Jones reagent. And again, most organic chemists are going to know exactly what you mean. When we use Jones reagent on a secondary alcohol, we remove one hydrogen attached to the central carbon. We make a double bond O and we deprotonate. And that leaves this structure, which is going to be a carbonyl with two carbon groups. We call that a ketone. Again, I had to fix a typo in the notes. Jones reagent itself is an actual chemical reagent. In fact, the actual active reagent is this species here. This is called chromic acid. If you look at the structure, this looks very similar to sulfuric acid. But instead of having a sulfur here, we have a chromium. It turns out there are a wide variety of inorganic acids that have a very similar structure to sulfuric acid. A wide variety of, of oxy acids using many different central metal and nonmetal ion atoms. Chromic acid itself is kind of unstable, kind of unstable, it's very unstable. If we make an aqueous solution of chromic on out, chromic acid, and we let it sit for a few days, what we see is we start to get a black precipitate because the chromic acid does a reaction with itself and it forms, forms un, um, insoluble chromium trioxide and um, other kinds of byproducts. So therefore, usually we make Jones reagent right when we need to use it and we use it all up and we don't try to save it. There are three common ways to make Jones reagent. The first way is to use sodium chromate, which is essentially the equivalent of sodium sulfate. 
we've replaced the two hydrogens with sodium ions. If we mix sodium chromate with strong acid like sulfuric acid, the sulfuric acid will protonate the chromate ion and will, be, and will produce chromic acid. So that's one way we make the Jones reagent. Similarly, we can use sodium dichromate. This is actually really, really commonly used. Again, we mix that with sulfuric acid, it breaks up the dichromate ion, it protonates it, and we get two molecules of chromic acid. Finally then, it is actually possible to use chromium trioxide with sulfuric acid. I think I have this wrong. I think it's concentrated sulfuric acid, to be honest with you. But basically what has to happen is we need to absorb a molecule of water and then we make a chromic acid. Again, this is the most commonly used. And in fact, in our textbook, very often they don't write Jones reagent. They write this instead, sodium dichromate dilute sulfuric acid. I'm not going to teach you the mechanism of any of these metal-based oxidations. They're complex. They have actually several different oxidation reactions going on inside of them. And quite frankly, I don't think they add very much to your knowledge of organic chemistry. So you're going to just basically need to put these things on flashcards. However, I do want to talk about a limitation of the Jones reagent that forces us to use PCC in the appropriate situation. If we use Jones reagent to react with a primary alcohol, where the alcohol carbon has only one carbon group, Unlike PCC, we don't get an aldehyde. Instead, we do one reaction, we make an aldehyde intermediate, and then the Jones reagent reacts again with the aldehyde and makes a carboxylic acid instead. So therefore, we can use the Jones reagent, in fact, we're going to in the next section, to make carboxylic acids, and that's a great way to make carboxylic acids, but it's a terrible way to make aldehydes. Instead, we want to use PCC. We're now going to look at oxidation of primary alcohols up to carboxylic acids. We have to use a primary alcohol for this because, as I pointed out, primary alcohols are at the end of a carbon chain. It turns out if we look at the structure of a carboxylic acid, a carboxylic acid has two bonds to oxygen for the carbonyl plus another bond to oxygen for the hydroxyl. So it really has only one bond available to make to carbon, which means that carboxylic acid carbons are essentially quote unquote primary, although we generally don't talk about them that way. They're at the end of a carbon chain. So if we're going to make a carboxylic acid, the alcohol that we start with has to be at the end of a, of a carbon chain, essentially primary. There's two reagents for doing this. The first one, as I discussed above, is Jones reagent. It's actually an excellent choice in many situations. However, we can also use a reagent that you may have seen in general chemistry, potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate will oxidize primary alcohols up to carboxylic acids. In order to do this, what we actually use is room temperature aqueous permanganate, although it's generally not written that way. We usually just say warm. And we have to put in hydroxide ions, so typically potassium hydroxide. The other thing we have to do is when we make a carboxylic acid, in the presence of base, it becomes deprotonated. So really, the product of step one is carboxylate. In other words, C double bond O, O negative, counter ion, probably potassium plus. So to make that the acid, we have to do a hydrolysis step. We have to put it into aqueous acid or something to neutralize the base and to protonate on the carboxylic acid. Jones reagent avoids this problem because Jones reagent 
is an inherently acidic reagent. 